So welcome back to the Engineered Angler. We're gonna be talking finally about swim baits. We're gonna build a swim bait and this is gonna be a multi-part video because I can't do it all in one video. So like all my videos, this is more tutorial than demonstration. I'm gonna go ahead and go through all the principles that I use to make decisions on how to build these things, how big to build them, how many joints to put in it, the general shape, and finally balance and performance. I'm going to show you what I want to do, how I expect to do it, and then I'm going to prove it to you in the water before we actually build the final one. We'll be doing some experimentation and we'll be doing some exploration on this design, so stick around. So first let's make some decisions about design parameters, materials, size, the number of segments, uh, the general shape, and whether we want fins or not. That kind of falls into the whole shape thing. Let's talk about material first. Since this is going to be a hand carved lure, uh, I've got to choose a material that's going to be strong enough to handle glued in screw eyes and hinges. This has to be strong enough to handle the loads and uh, be at least as strong as the glue, right? So. What I'm going to use, instead of using wood, I'm going to use uh, a block of resin. Now I cast this block of resin probably a year and a half ago uh, because I wanted to do this video, but never had a chance to do it. So what I did is I just made a little form and I poured this resin in. And this is my typical formula. It's a 10% micro balloon formula and it's certainly cured by now. I don't know the exact density because this is some old resin that I had a long time ago and I, so I'm gonna have to get density on it but at least I know the dimensions I have to work with so this is gonna limit our dimensions so I'm gonna go ahead and measure this and I'll show you what I got so we're gonna be limited by that this size which is seven inches in length and two inches in width and three quarters of an inch in thickness so we'll lose a little bit of the maximum size just from carving and cutting and sanding. So we have the material picked out. We pretty much know our size. Another of the design parameters that we have to set our minds on, or at least make some level of decision, is whether we want fins. Now fins look cool, but depending where they are on the body, they can affect the performance of the lure pretty profoundly. So when you put a dorsal fin on a, on a lure, you have to be very careful that that dorsal fin, like on this little lure, is very straight, very small, uh, and you can be relatively certain it's perfectly aligned with the center line of the lure. If not, even the slightest little deviation on that fin, or in this direction or in that direction, will cause that lure to be unstable while it's swimming. So it'll want to veer off to one side or roll. Pectoral fins are even worse because they're difficult to align because you don't have a center line to eyeball. And so if you stick a, a, a pectoral fin in there, if when you stick it on there, you're eyeballing it and you've got no real reference, it might stick out a little farther or down a little farther. These are, are treacherous. The tail fin is something I consider every time I make one of these. Uh, they look really cool. It makes it look a little more natural, but it does kill the action a little bit. So before we move on to these other decisions to be made, let's talk about uh, the definition uh, or what I consider to be the definition of a swim bait. So for me, a swim bait is a hard bait that swims because of the shape of the body. It has no uh, controlling surfaces like a dive bill or some kind of tail paddle or even the hard flat surface that a uh, lipless crankbait has. Those types of lures are not, in my book, they're not swim baits. But you can have a swim bait that's a single piece and not segmented. So here's uh, that little swim bait I made on the last design build series of videos. And let me go ahead and show you a quick clip of it swimming in the water. One, two, three. So you can see single body can swim. It, it has that undulating swimming motion, looks pretty natural, but the more segments you have, the better it is, right? 
eh, there is such a thing as diminishing returns when it comes to how many segments you have. So as you move from a two segment lure to a three segment lure to a four segment lure and even a lure way beyond just two or three, it can get a little weird. <laughs> And like I said, there's some diminishing returns. So for me, a swim bait that actually functions exactly how I want it to function would do this. It would swim very fluidly with a nice deep undulation at a slow crank and then continue to do it just faster as you crank it really fast. Stable, straight, without rolling or uh, diving to the uh, top or to the bottom. And that actually is a pretty big charge. It's not that easy to do. There's lots of swim baits out there on the shelves that when you put it on the water, they have maybe a small window of functionality where they work really well at a slow crank or they work really well at a quick crank, but somewhere beyond those areas, they really just either go straight or, they're, uh, or you crank them too fast and they're unstable. So what we want to do is design a lure that will stack the deck in our favor. For now, I want to show you what those different segments or number of segments will do in the water. So let's go down to the dock. Man, it's hot. I got to stay hydrated. Well, we're down here at the dock and I've got a lure I want to show you first. I want to show you basically what I call my standard. This is the triple belly. It's a three segmented uh, bait and it swims beautifully. It's actually caught me one of my biggest fish of my life in this lake. So let me show you how this uh, performs in the water and then you can sort of gauge the rest of them by this. First, we'll move it progressively faster and then progressively slower. So, before we move on to testing the different segments, how many segments to have on there, let's look at the exact same lure, but with a tail fluke on. Okay, this, the exact same lure you just saw in the water, but I put a little tiny uh, thin, clear plastic fin on it. And I wanna show you the difference in action. There's a subtle, but real difference. Check it out. The fluid movement isn't quite as fluid as the other one. and it isn't as deep in its undulations. Now that isn't bad, but what you're doing is you're trading a deep undulation and movement for a little bit of realism. And let's face it, just a little bit. Here it is with five segments. I'm running some little hook simulators. That's simply to simulate the weight of the hook. You can see how the movement has been pushed all the way to the back of the lure, and you've got to pull it pretty fast to get a full action. Now I've always thought that if you were making a swim bait to look like a needlefish, that's the way to go. I'll put the last two segments on there to show you how exaggerated it gets. Here you go. A little odd looking, but let's give it a shot. Now the swimming action is really pushed all the way to the back of the lure, and it's really difficult to get it to really move well. You've got to really crank it in. So you can see it's those last four segments that are really doing all the work. So why make it bigger than four segments? By the way, I've been working on my springtail. This is my springtail crankbait. Let me show you. And the action on this thing is just absolutely, it's, it's insane. But the weather's closing in, so we'll go in and I'll put some footage at the end of this video. So check it out. It's hot out there. Okay, so let's recap. We're gonna carve this lure out of a resin blank. We're gonna make it the size of this blank, seven by two inches by three quarters of an inch. The number of segments. Let's talk about that just a little bit. I'm gonna go with four, just like depicted here. Let me give you a little bit of a rule of thumb on how many segments to use. If your lure is about four inches or less, stick to three segments. If you go beyond four inches by very much, you can go to four segments. And I probably wouldn't move to five segments until I was well beyond seven inches and I would probably stick to five segments as big as a reasonable lure can be and just increase the length of that first segment. As far as fins, I'm not going to put any fins on this. I'm not even going to put a tail fin on. 
I will shape this lure so that I can uh, retrofit one later if I want to. Once I start casting them, I'm, I can cut a slot and I can put a soft fin, either soft rubber or uh, some sort of fiber. So I'm designing a lure here, explaining the principles behind that design and telling you how I'm uh, sort of stacking the deck in the designer's favor to be sure that I get a really good lure. So as promised, here's some footage of that springtail crankbait. Check it out. It looks like it's being electrocuted. I'll catch you on the next video.